Now, um, you showed me um, recently an appliance that uh, you had a lot to do with, the apnea guard. Uh, something that uh, uh, looks to be kind of a trial appliance that helps the dentist, you know, figure out uh, how far for, how far open the bite should be and how far forward the jaw should be when we right. as a laboratory make it as a, uh, a final appliance and it gives the patient instantly some relief, you know, when they yeah. come in and you diagnose this, they're able to leave, it sounds like that day with an appliance already instead of waiting a week for a lab to make one. Tell me a little bit about the apnea guard. Yeah, the apnea guard, the onus for that was the questions that I get from new dentists starting, you know, uh, how do you do the bite? How do you decide where to put the jaw? How much vertical separation do you need? Um, is there a simple way to kind of try it to see if the patient's going to respond? And so based on those things, hearing that for many years, we developed the apnea guard, which is a off the shelf, tear open the package, uh, two trays that slide along a sleeve. Mm -hmm. You put some PVS in there, have them bite into it and then set their jaw based on an algorithm that we developed and the patient's treated immediately. So it's just regular polyvinyl impression material inside of there, they bite into it, it sets and that's right. going to lock it onto their teeth. And, and it's not going to last a long time, maybe right. a month, but it, you will find out if the patient's a responder right. by using that. So if they're a responder... Before you commit to the big lab fee. And exactly, all, right. exactly. So you can use it as a trial in that sense. Um, sleep labs uh, may be able to use that as well because it really doesn't have to be fitted by a dentist. The apnea guard is so simple that a, a physician, a nurse, an anesthesiologist, they can pull that out and fit it to the patient in the lab, mm -hmm. test them in the lab overnight and say, hey, this thing worked. Make the appliance to fit right where we have their bite and we know it's going to work there. So it takes some of the mystery out of where does the jaw go? Where should I put it? Right. And that, that's confusing for some dentists. You know, like they adjust it and all of them are titratable. We call it titration when you make the little adjustments right. and to move the, the high rack screws. Backwards and, and, and yeah, forwards. Yeah, to find that sweet spot. And so we've taken a lot of the mystery out of, out of doing that, made it very simple. Right. And it's low cost, you know, it's, it's uh, going to be inexpensive for the patient uh, and the dentist to try that. So the sweet spot is we don't want to take them you know, we don't want to take them all the way out yeah. if the symptoms would stop when they were only out, you know, halfway yeah. or something like that, 50% of the way, 60% of the way, whatever it might be. And it's interesting you bring that up because most of the dentists who send us impressions for appliances uh, will take the impressions and send it with a bite, but it's a centric bite, which is kind of silly because we could have done that on our own yeah. with the yeah. wear yeah. It's really easy to articulate, you know, full models, and we could have done that, and we're just kind of left guessing how yeah. much protrusion uh, they want on this. And so we kind of guess and pick an arbitrary 50% number, but we never get a bite beyond that. And it's sometimes difficult to take protrusive type bites, but this sounds fantastic because they bite into the appliance and then you move the appliance according to this right. formula. It just slides, right. And then you have 30 days to move it where you want. And when it's working for the patient, you take out the inserts and send that to the laboratory and they make a basically a permanent version of the appliance the patient has already that's worn right. and gotten used to. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's exactly right. Good. Um, yeah, the apnea guard is, you know, taking the bite, you, you talked about the bite. The apnea guard can be the bite that you send to the lab, like you said. Uh, construction bites, we used to, I, I remember doing those for uh, functional appliances right, right. back in the day I when I did that, that stuff. Um, so taking a functional bite is not hard. We know how to do that. And there's very simple devices you can use that for, that are designed for dental sleep medicine to do that. So really the bite is very important. Um, and uh, you don't have to go to the maximal jaw position. Almost never do we put, go way out like that. Right. You know, really you get a logarithmic improvement in the caliber of the airway with just a little bit of protrusion. And in one of the studies we did, I'm, I'm just still blown away by this. Um, tiny changes, quarter, half a millimeter of titration improve the AHI dramatically. So we're, you never believe that a half a millimeter of moving the jaw forward would impact the patient this much. Really? Uh, so you need very, very small changes. You don't need to strain the jaw. You don't, there's no need to dislocate the jaw right. and do all that stuff. So that's, that's the cool part. That's what we're still learning. Right. Uh, that's what makes it exciting because it hasn't been all worked out yet. Right. I, that is amazing that a half millimeter, because the, we're, I, guess, I guess it's a linear relationship, right? The, the mandible goes out half a millimeter and the tongue moves a half millimeter? 
Well, I, it, it's not really exactly like that. Right. Because it, literally what happens as you go forward, the airway dilates sideways. Oh, on and its that, own. That's, okay. Uh, we didn't know that until we could have had MRI images. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, it's all about moving the tongue forward. And that's what I talk to patients about. But really, it's about increasing the lateral width of the airway. And that happens when the mandible comes forward yes. as well. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, the mechanisms of action of the oral appliance is just being worked out too. Okay, well that makes sense then to have a trial appliance like you're talking about, because like I said, as a laboratory, we just guess where to put the lower jaw. And so maybe we put it someplace and the patient's symptoms go away, but maybe we're 30% farther than we need to be. I would guess that the farther you go out, the more you tend to increase the side effects with these types of appliances and maybe the discomfort of getting used to them. Yes, uh, that's true. Now, there is a, what we call a dose effect, just like a drug. The more drug you give, the more response you get. So as the jaw goes forward, yeah, your airway opens more and more and more, but there's a point at which you have diminishing returns. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And so that's what I meant by the sweet spot. You right. can actually pass up the best, part, the best wow. position of okay. the jaw. And then there's a vertical component, which adds a new dimension to uh, how the appliances work. And the apnea guard has a sort of a system for choosing the amount of vertical for the type of patient you have.